Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and this is the channel where I went to business school so you didn't need to, and today we are talking about the latest stock market news updates that investors need to know. With that being said, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now, subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, let's get right into it. Stocks rose yesterday as investors mulled earnings reports that beat expectations from companies like Palantir Technologies and Spotify. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company which serves both commercial enterprises as well as government agencies, and I really like how they specialize in artificial intelligence. Their earnings report was very good, causing their share price to jump by 30% up to $21.87. I personally really like Palantir Technologies, except I do believe their share price will cool off over the next few weeks, or if not over the next month, so please brace yourself for that, but in general, this is a solid company. For more information on Spotify as well as Palantir, feel free to watch yesterday's video, but right now, let's focus on today's stock market news. Now, it's not all rainbows and sunshine because we saw Snapchat, which is a social media giant, recently plunge in their stock price after hours when it reported less than impressive revenue results. Meanwhile, we also saw New York Community Bancorp fall to its lowest level since 1997, and Moody's downgraded it to junk, so clearly there are some companies that are doing very well and others that are not doing so well. So it looks like business as usual in the stock market. Next up, let's talk about how Fox, Warner Bros. Discovery, and Disney's ESPN plan to all join forces to create a new streaming service. Each of these companies will own one-third of this new entity, and this new entity or streaming service will be utilizing a subscription-based business model. This new streaming service will allow their subscribers to view pro and college football games and other sporting events which were traditionally only on a television. This streaming service is going to be a standalone app, so it's not going to be a part of Disney+, Plus, Warner Bros. Discovery, or Fox. However, subscribers will be able to bundle it with things such as Hulu, Mac, and Disney Plus. So if you are a sports fan who is also an investor, feel free to look further into this streaming service. Clearly, this is going to reflect very positively on Fox, Warner Bros. Discovery, as well as Disney's general share prices, so keep an eye out for that. Next, let's talk about a biopharma company which I absolutely love, and I personally own stock in them, and that would be Eli Lilly. Eli Lilly has recently eclipsed Tesla in their market capitalization, meaning that according to their market cap, Eli Lilly is a larger company than Tesla. I personally hold LLY stock in my portfolio, and I believe that this company will eventually achieve a $1 trillion market cap. Eli Lilly has been in the news a lot lately thanks to their newest pharmaceutical, which would be Zepound. Zepound is a pharmaceutical which is used for weight loss, and it is anticipated that the sales of Zepound will reach $1.9 billion in 2024, with the number growing up to $12 billion in just a few years. This shows great momentum and a great future forecast and projection for the future stock price of Eli Lilly, and I believe that this company still has a lot of upside left in them, so feel free to do your own research and add this company to your portfolio if you deem it fit. But that's not all. We also have Meta Platforms in the news today, and if you didn't know, Meta Platforms was formerly known as Facebook. Meta Platforms is a giant technology company which also operates various social media apps. Recently, Meta came out with a statement saying that they would start putting, quote, AI-generated labels on images created with outside tools like Midjourney. Now, if you're not familiar with artificial intelligence tools like Midjourney, essentially you can type something in on Midjourney and then it will generate a picture for you. However, Meta wants people to understand the content that is AI-generated and other content which is not, and this could actually help with misinformation at times. Now, overall, I don't think this really goes one way or the other, and I don't think this news is big enough to impact the general share price of this phenomenal company, but again, if you don't already own this company in your portfolio, I would highly recommend you do your own research on this company to determine if it's a good investment opportunity for you. Next up in the news, we have JP Morgan at Chase, which is another phenomenal banking company that I personally own in my portfolio. JP Morgan Chase recently announced plans to add over 500 new branch locations by 2027. These 500 new physical locations are going to be in various communities, including a low to moderate income areas. If you didn't know, JP Morgan Chase is America's largest bank by assets, and they are also the largest US bank by network, with nearly 5,000 locations across 48 states. 
But JP Morgan Chase is not only adding more than 500 new physical branches from now until 2027, they also plan to renovate approximately 1.7 thousand of their existing US branches. And because this company is opening up new branches and renovating 1.7 thousand physical locations, they plan to hire around 3.5 thousand employees to support this expansion. In my view, I'm not really that impressed with this and I'll tell you why. The reason why I'm not impressed is because new physical branch locations isn't going to do too much. I think the real money is going mobile and digital, because we've seen a large rise in mobile banking. To give you some context, mobile banking is when you do your banking on your phone through a smart app, and this has kicked off a large decline in physical bank locations. Ever since 2009, we have seen a large decrease in physical banking locations, with approximately 2.5 thousand branches being shut down last year alone. We also know that nearly half of Americans prefer to bank on their smartphones instead of going into physical locations. Therefore, traditional banks such as JP Morgan Chase and Bank of America may not really get a large return by investing into physical branch locations. Now, don't get me wrong, JP Morgan Chase and Bank of America have heavily invested into their mobile apps, but it's just not keeping up with other companies such as Ally Financial and SoFi Technologies. Now, as a disclaimer, I personally own JP Morgan Chase, Bank of America, SoFi Technologies, and Ally Financial all in my banking portfolio. Therefore, I think investors should be balanced by investing both into fintech companies as well as traditional banks. But next up in the news, we have AT&T. If you're anything like me, you hate spam calls and robocalls, which according to this article, makes up more than a quarter of all US phone calls. And that's why you need to know this news, because AT&T recently struck a partnership with TransUnion, who together announced a branded call service that verifies rings from legit businesses by displaying their name and logo on your phone screen. This is essentially a buffed version of caller ID, and this will eliminate a large portion of spam calls from illegitimate people or businesses. However, only time will tell in regards to how successful this will be. I remember when the FCC implemented some semi-successful robocalling countermeasures to where they required companies like Verizon, Comcast, and T-Mobile to implement anti-scam calling technology back in 2021. However, this effort only resulted in an 8% drop in robocalls. However, if AT&T can do better than this, then this will reflect very positively in their share price. Also, AT&T is a great dividend stock to own, so if you are into dividend stocks or if you just like this news update, I would highly recommend you look into AT&T. However, for me personally, I really like T-Mobile. So feel free to look into that stock as well, because I would love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. Speaking about dividends, Disney, ticker symbol DIS, which is an entertainment company, recently announced that it would boost its cash dividend by 50%. Disney also had great news in regards to their earnings report, considering that they brought in adjusted earnings of $1.22 per share, which is a significant increase compared to what analysts thought the company would bring in, considering that analysts projected that the company would only bring in $0.99 cents per share for their EPS. The company also forecasted that for the full year, they will bring in around $4.60 per share for their EPS, which is great news, because that corresponds to an increase of at least 20% since 2023. Therefore, Disney's bottom line has been doing quite well, however, their top of the line did not see the same amount of success. Because Disney's revenue came in at $23.5 billion, which missed expectations of $23.8 billion. However, in general, I would say this is more good news than bad news. And to quote straight from the article in regards to their dividend, the company announced a cash dividend of 45 cents per share, which is an increase of 50% versus the last dividend paid in January. The dividend will be payable on July 25th to shareholders of record at the close of business on July 8th. So clearly you can still get in on this dividend. On the other hand, the reason for Disney's lackluster revenue is due to challenges regarding a decline in their TV business and a slower growth in their parks business. And we also have to take into consideration the loss from their streaming service named Disney+. Plus. However, like we said previously, the company is still coming out with a new streaming service, which they are doing in tandem with Fox as well as Warner Bros. Discovery. And that would be in regards to sports. Now, while all of this is going on, the CEO has remained committed to cut various costs to combat various challenges that Disney is facing. Right after this report, the shares jumped by 7%, and that's why the company currently trades at around $99.14. 
sense, and many analysts are bullish on this company, so again, I would highly recommend you look into Disney stock for your personal portfolio. Next up, let's talk about the fintech company named PayPal, which I am a huge fan of. Recently, PayPal stock, ticker symbol PYPL, fell by more than 3% down to $61.32. I personally think there is no real reason why the company is trending down in their share price. I understand that PayPal did not offer 2024 revenue guidance or an outlook for the year of 2024, but for their fourth quarter results, they did very well. According to the article, PayPal's earnings for the fourth quarter rose 19% to $1.48 per share on an adjusted basis, while their revenue climbed 9% to $8 billion. And these are very good results because analysts projected that this company would only bring in $1.36 per share for their EPS, but they actually brought in $1.48 per share, so they clearly beat on their earnings per share. Then for the revenue, analysts forecasted that the company would only bring in $7.88 billion, but they actually brought in $8 billion, thus beating expectations yet again. But despite PayPal beating on their top and bottom line, the company's share price is still trending downwards. Perhaps this is due to PayPal's plan to cut 9% of their workforce throughout the year of 2024, meaning that they are going to lay off around 2,500 employees. In other news, we have ARK Invest's CEO and investor celebrity Kathy Wood selling this one particular stock. The stock that she is selling is a cancer diagnostics specialist named Exact Sciences, ticker symbol EXAS. Now before you get the wrong idea, ARK Invest did not choose to close its entire position in this company, they just decided to sell some shares, and this could be due to rebalancing of their ETFs and their portfolio. Normally when ARK Invest sells a stock, other investors also tend to sell that same stock as well. But is this selling justified? Well, let's talk about it. The main purpose of this company is to eradicate cancer and create a treatment for this terrible disease. Although this might seem impossible at first, it's not going to stop Exact Sciences from coming up with a solution. The company's main focus is to catch this disease early by producing diagnostic tests. Therefore, the survival rate of individuals will be increased through their testing. Now, I absolutely love the vision behind this company because I absolutely cannot stand cancer and I'm sure that a lot of our lives have been negatively impacted by this terrible disease. So any company that is fighting against this company is okay in my book. However, the problem here is that it's not a very good investment. The company is still not profitable. And that's why for the quarter through September 30th, the company reported a net loss per share of 86 cents. Although this was significantly better than the net loss that they brought in per share of $2.82 during the same period from last year. Now, I personally would wait for this company to become profitable or potentially wait until the company is on the verge of profitability before investing. But in the meantime, it looks like Kathy Wood is not scared about selling shares. However, we should also focus on what she is buying. Recently, Kathy Wood bought up three stocks, including Palantir Technologies, which we mentioned earlier. Palantir Technologies is a big data and analytics company, which is an artificial intelligence specialist. Palantir Technologies' PLTR stock is already up around 7.91%, and that's because Palantir is still riding the momentum wave from their recent earnings report. In Palantir's recent earnings report, their revenues surged by 20% up to $608.4 million, which beat analysts' forecasts because they wanted the company to only increase by 18%. On top of that, for their earnings per share, the company beat Wall Street expectations because Wall Street projected that they would only bring in a $0.07 cent EPS, but they actually actually brought in $0.08 cents per share, so this is very good in regards to their earnings. Next up, we also see Kathy Wood buying more Tesla, and if you didn't know, Kathy Wood was the original OG bull on Tesla back in the day, telling everyone that the company was going to surge. And ultimately, Kathy Wood was correct, Tesla did indeed surge. And like Kathy Wood, I have also been adding Tesla to my personal portfolio because I think the share price is just way too low. Tesla has had a very rough start to 2024, with this stock trading 26% lower this year. The reason why their share price is falling was due to margins decreasing, price cuts, as well as a lower demand for electric vehicles. On top of that, we also saw analysts downgrade Tesla's rating and their price target. As an example, one analyst downgraded Tesla from an outperform rating down to a neutral rating, and they lowered their price target from $245 down to a price prediction of just $195. And to make matters worse, Tesla may also start to lay off employees, to where recently, managers were asked to identify jobs which were critical to the company. That means for the people who do not have quote-unquote critical jobs, 
for the company, they could potentially be laid off. However, I personally am buying this company on a weakness right now because the future looks extremely bright for Tesla, which is an electric vehicle manufacturer. Tesla also specializes in artificial intelligence as well as energy storage and energy generation, so I would highly recommend you look into this company because it's one of my all-time favorites. Next up, we saw Kathy Wood of ARK Invest invest into Intelia Therapeutics. This company is a gene editing company, which I believe is going to be the future. However, my favorite gene editing company right now is CRISPR Therapeutics. Now, the problem with this company is that they are losing cash and they are not profitable. Now, on the flip side, the company has loads of cash on hand and they can survive until 2026 pretty comfortably. So as long as they flip to a profit before then, this company looks extremely well poised and well positioned to increase in their general share price. The company is also conducting early clinical phase trials for some of their promising therapies and a recent price target even though it was lowered from $93 to $80 is still substantially higher than their current share price which is around $20 right now. So if this company could jump from around $20 to $80 this could be a phenomenal investment opportunity as long as you are willing to hold this company past 2026. So feel free to look into Palantir's PLTR stock, Tesla's TSLA stock, and Intelia Therapeutics NTLA stock. You should also be aware of the latest news updates in regards to Rivian Automotive, which is an electric vehicle startup company. Rivian Automotive shares, ticker symbol RIVN, has surged by around 40% in December of 2023, but recently they have fallen in their share price by around 30%. But investors can look forward to an upcoming catalyst because the EV startup announced on February 5th that it will launch the R2. This vehicle is going to be priced at around $40,000 and you are also going to be able to access around a $7,500. $500 write-off. This has excited a lot of analysts to where some believe that Rivian is one of the best investment ideas for 2024, and others say that Rivian seems well positioned for a strong 2024, but we are going to have to see what this company makes of themselves over the next year. Because other analysts are not so bullish considering that a Deutsche Bank analyst downgraded Rivian to a hold rating from the original buy rating. They also cut their price prediction from $29 per share down to just $19. This was mainly due to the downside in production volume for Rivian, because it seems that the demand for electric vehicles have somewhat softened. But we're going to get more information on this when Rivian reports their fourth quarter and full year earnings and revenue on February 21st. As of right now, Wall Street expects a loss of $1.35 per share, compared to a loss of $1.73 per share in 2022. But the good news is that analysts predict that their quarter four revenue will double up to $1.28 billion. So this could be exciting for investors. So clearly keep your eye out for this one. You should also be aware that Taiwan Semiconductor has surged by around 5% today. And clearly they are a semiconductor company. Taiwan Semiconductor, ticker symbol TSM, is a chip making powerhouse. And I absolutely love this company. The reason why their share price is higher today is because they recently released their monthly revenue report. To where in January, they brought in six point nine billion dollars. This was a large increase both sequentially and on an annual basis. The figure was 22% higher than the December 2023 tally and it represented a near 8% increase year over year. This signals to investors that there is strong demand for Taiwan Semiconductor's chips which will be used in artificial intelligence. So if you like AI stocks, feel free to look further into TSM. Speaking about semiconductor companies, let's talk about ARM Holdings which recently surged by 25% in their share price. The ticker symbol for this company is ARM, and they are a British chip design firm. And the reason why their share price jumped by 25%, which is crazy, is because of their third quarter results, which beat expectations. And they also gave a very impressive forward forecast for the full year of 2024. ARM earned an adjusted $338 million in operating income during the period on $824 million worth of sales. And this crushed Wall Street estimates because Wall Street thought that the company would only bring in around $762.99 million worth of sales. On top of that, ARM increased their forward outlook for the full year to where they expect to earn an earnings per share between $1.20 to $1.24 per share on an adjusted basis, which is up from their previous estimate of $1 to $1.10 per share. The company also increased their sales forecast to be between $3.16 billion and $3.21 billion. And this is a large increase from what analysts are expecting that this company will bring in throughout the year of 2024 to where they believe the company will bring in $3.02 billion worth of revenue. 
On top of that, you should be aware that for the coming quarter, ARM expects to earn between 28 cents and 32 cents on an adjusted basis with sales between 850 and 900 million dollars. While analysts expect adjusted earnings to come in at around 21 cents per share and the revenue to come in at 778.5 million dollars. So this is fantastic news for ARM and I anticipate further upside potential in this stock. Speaking about companies that are climbing higher in their share price, you need to be aware of Fortinet, CrowdStrike, and Palo Alto Networks. And if you didn't know, these are cybersecurity companies. Fortinet recently brought in quarter four sales and earnings. However, you would be surprised that they actually weren't all too great. Now, clearly their sales weren't bad because they grew at a respectable 10% year over year rate in regards to their sales. And pertaining to their non-GAAP profits, they exceeded expectations by bringing in a 16% increase. But we need to take into consideration that most of these numbers reflect a significant slowdown in growth compared to Fortinet's performance earlier in the year. However, despite this, according to thefly.com, no fewer than 16 analysts have increased their price target for this company. Therefore, investors such as you and I really need to pay attention to this company. And this has also increased the momentum in other companies such as CrowdStrike as well as Palo Alto Networks. In general, cybersecurity stocks seem to be surging right now. And honestly, I love it because I am personally invested in all three of those companies. To round out the video, you need to be aware of major upcoming earnings reports from companies like Pinterest and Cloudflare, among many others that investors are very excited about. So if you want to stay informed about the latest stock news updates that you should know of as an investor, go ahead and annihilate that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new, comment down below your thoughts about any or all of these stories, and with that being said, I will see you in the next YT video.